I stand, O Lord, in this holy place. May I worship thee and behold thy face. May I be transformed by thy word and thy spirit and behold the day of thy <laughs> Thank you so much. Good morning. good morning. So good to be back. Uh, so it's a new month. December is here. And the power for this month is life. Uh, the disciple that represents that is Judas. And the color of the month is red. How suitable for Christmas coming, huh? Um, the physical location of this power is in the generative organs. So I've been asked to share announcements with you. You have the announcements in your bulletin and the recurring events are there. You probably know those better than I do. Um, but today is the first Sunday of Advent. First, oh. before the announcements. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, my first time here. I guess we were supposed to do our statement of being before the announcements. I didn't read my program. Anyway, I'll continue with announcements and then we'll do that, okay? So today is the first Sunday of Advent, and the first Sunday of Advent in the Unity Church is hope. And so whatever it is you're hoping for, stand in faith, because uh, we can have whatever it is we desire, right? If we stand in that faith, and so stay in hope during this holiday season. Today, there is a church decorating party um, if you'd like to stick around and help us decorate the tree in the church following the service, it would be greatly appreciated. A light lunch of sandwiches will be served, and uh, they hope to be finished by 1.30. And you know the old saying, many hands make light work. <laughs> right. Um, and you're hosting an Advent potluck dinner on Friday, December 15th at 6 o'clock, and there's a sign-up sheet in the bookstore and there will be a short service with caroling following the dinner. So bring your singing voices. And now we will uh, oh, turn over to our opening hymn, which comes before our statement of being according to the program here, Augustus. Are we good? <laughs> so join us in our opening hymn, if you will. 272, it came upon a midnight clear. First and third verse. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old. From angels bending near the earth To touch their hearts of gold Peace on earth, good will to men From heaven's all-gracious King solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophet heart foretold when with the Circling ears come around the age of gold when peace still over 
all the earth is ancient splendor fling and the world oh, at world sends back the song which now the On our statement of being, God, God is, all, is all, both, both invisible, invisible and visible. visible. One, one presence, presence, one mind, one power is all. This is one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life perfect love, and perfect substance. We now join in singing the Lord's Prayer. continue this prayerful time, we take a moment to meditate, to come into the place of stillness. And so I invite you to become comfortable in your seats. Feel your feet firmly planted on the ground, the chair supporting you the energy of those seated around you. And just gently breathe. Maybe take a couple of relaxing breaths, letting go of anything that's on your mind or on your heart, especially those things that might be weighing heavy. Set them aside for now. And if you're comfortable in doing so, close your eyes. 
shout out any outer distractions. Notice the beautiful sunlight streaming in on us. Let that light represent for you the light of the Christ. And as we come into this holy season, churches around the world, Christian churches are celebrating this season of Advent, the preparation for the birth of the Christ Jesus. And in unity, as we prepare, we take time to reflect on the Christ present within us. And we invite a new birth in ourselves. And today we begin with hope. There is hope. We know and we're told in the scriptures all things are possible to those who believe. So wherever you are in your journey of life, take hope in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge the Lord. Acknowledge in this moment the Christ presence that lives within you. That presence that breathes you, that beats your heart, that lives in you and as you and through you every day. And today we just take a moment to come to the silence, to commune with that Christ within us. And perhaps we ask in the quiet time, what is mine to do to awaken this Christ within me? What shall I do to experience the new birth represented at Christmas? Take a moment in the silence to commune with that Christ within you. And as we continue our service and you move through the days ahead in preparation for this new coming, may you always know that you can return to this place of peace and comfort. God is always with you. We are one with our Creator. calling forth the wisdom and the joy and the love and the peace that represents this holiday season. Call that forth from the Christ within you. I invite you to enjoy the holiday season in a whole new way as you share it with the Christ within. And as we come back to the presence of this room, Wiggle your fingers and toes. Open up your eyes. Take a look around you. At the people who are on this journey with you, creating a season of joy and peace. We say thank you, God. And so it is.
foundation of my heart except talent, hey? And some lungs. Woo -hoo. <laughs> he, he earned it. He earned his food, did he? Sing for his supper. So your program says that I'm going to talk to you about spiritual activism today, but I'm not. <laughs> this is a first. Um, I was moved to change the title of my talk after the uh, bulletins were already printed, and I got permission to go right ahead and do that, because when you're moved by spirit to do something, do it, okay? Um, before I get into this, I just wanted to mention, and it's been, this has been occurring to me for a few weeks now, after meditation, we sing, may the words of my heart, my, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, in thy sight, O oh Lord. So it just occurred to me, and I want to share with you, you are acceptable in the sight of the Lord, always. 
okay? You can't do or say anything wrong. You don't meditate or pray in the wrong way ever, okay? So when we talk about asking God to accept that in us, we're really talking to that Christ within us that I talked about in meditation, right? Do you accept yourself? Are you honoring yourself? Are you okay with what it is you're feeling and what it is you're praying and how you're doing it? That's what it's all about, okay? So be okay with the way you pray. It's good, it's wonderful, and God hears it in just the way you mean it, no matter how the words come out, all right? Just wanted to share that with you. So the new title for my talk <laughs> is A New Pattern, a new talk title, a new pattern. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am doing a new thing. Why a new pattern? Well, in case you haven't noticed, this year, 2017, is ending in four little weeks, four weeks. And if you want your 2018 to be an exact replicate of 2017, then you don't need this talk today and you may be dismissed. Even if you've had a fabulous year, and many of you know I have. I got married in January. What a great way to start a year. And in, in case you're noticing that my Ken isn't with me today, um, he had a conference in uh, Cleveland this weekend. And so he'll be returning this evening. So he sends his regards. I'll be, he'll be back with me when I visit again next month. But even if you wanted 2017, or 2018 to be exactly like 2017, you can't have it. You know why? Because other people, other things, and other situations have changed. It's not up to you. You, you. you can't have it that way. But you can have as good, if it was a great year for you, or better than you had last year, if you decide that you're willing to change your patterns of being. Because we all know that the only thing that we can change, and the only thing that we have any control over in this life is ourselves. You guys are good. So let's prepare ourselves by looking at some ways we can change our patterns. <clears throat> I realized as I was preparing this talk that God did this. God changed patterns. Think about it. In the Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, God spoke through prophets and angels and dreams. And in the Christian scripture that we call the New Testament, God spoke through Jesus, his son, incarnate. He had a, found a new way of being God, if you will. Okay? A way that would make it easier for us to understand because we like to see things and touch things, and we need to learn through our, our senses, right? So here's Jesus. God says, here's Jesus. Let him live among you. There's a new way of being. There's a new pattern, if you will. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, states the divine incarnation of Jesus is the divine pattern for all men who are seeking the Christ way of life. Because that's what Jesus was here for. <clears throat> he was here to demonstrate for us how to live a life in communion with God. So a new way of, of being Christ-like is simply allowing Jesus to be your way shower and teacher. Now we all know that, but life gets busy. And I always hope that when we do the meditation, it takes about five minutes. You spend about one of those minutes in the silence. And I hope that you have an experience like I do. You just feel something different, something energetically happening, really noticing that connection. And you can do that any time you choose. Any time. <clears throat> May Rowland 
was the director of Silent Unity for 55 years. How's that for a long career? She came in after Myrtle Fillmore retired from the position. So I can imagine that May Rowland prayed with and for a lot of people over the years, huh? 55 years? And she was probably asked a lot of questions about prayer and how to do it and why we do it and why it seems like it's not answered sometimes. <clears throat> well, she was once asked, do you believe anyone can change the pattern of his life through right thinking? And her response, I see your head's nodding, yeah. yes, she said, anyone can, anyone. <clears throat> she goes on to say the whole pattern of life can change through the use of positive, constructive thinking. The whole pattern of life. Now, now I'm not suggesting that any of us here need to change the whole pattern of our life. We do some things good, don't we? Yeah. We don't have to change everything that we are, everything that we believe. Every, I'm not suggesting that at all. But a new pattern. Because anyone can change through, in May's words, positive, constructive thinking. In Unity, we teach that thought is the beginning of all creation. That's a truth statement. Everything begins as a thought. And if we feed ourselves on constructive rather than destructive thoughts, we can change our lives. That's why I wanted to bring in the piece about the meditation. If you're picking on yourself and telling yourself you're not doing it right or not doing it good enough, is that constructive or destructive? Destructive. And your mind believes you when, you when you tell it something, even if you don't say it out loud. That's the meditation of your heart part. And then guess what? You start speaking words in alignment with that. And you start taking actions in alignment with that. Like you're some kind of lesser than. No, 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 no. We can change everything by the power of constructive thinking. I found this really cool article by Maria Christina McDonald entitled, Recognizing Our Patterns and Learning How to Change Them. So with any change, we first have to recognize what we have, right? And, and then choose to change it. She says, life has a funny way of teaching us lessons. When there is something you need to learn, something that you need to work on, the same situation will continue to repeat itself until you either learn your lesson or find a healthy way of dealing with whatever the issue is. Now, I hear people say all the time, and you know that um, I, I'm a life coach, um, and I've been coaching for 15 years, and I hear the same kinds of stories over and over and over from people. Why do I keep getting the same results even though I'm doing things differently? I hear this question a lot in relationships, and I coach a lot of women through a a program with the YMCA. Why do I keep experiencing the same thing in relationships? I'll meet somebody new, I think he's just wonderful, he's so different from the last guy, he does this and he's that, and before too long, he starts treating me just like the other guy. I feel like I'm back in the same thing again, and no matter how many times I go, I give up on relationships, I give up on men, I give up, well, well what's the common thread in all of these relationships. It's you, okay? So if you find this is happening to you, and not just in relationships, in your finances, in your faith life, in your career, in your physical health and well-being. I try to do things differently, but I keep getting the same results. What a coincidence. <laughs> no coincidence. You're being shown a lesson. And so lessons can vary. Lesson in humility, lesson in gratitude, lesson in empathy, lesson in self-love. Ask yourself, when you think there might be a pattern going on, what's my part in this? What is my part in this? 
in a relationship it's often other people will treat you how you teach them to treat you you don't think you teach people how to treat you they observe how you treat yourself how are you talking about yourself how are you thinking about yourself how are you nourishing yourself how are you they're going to do the same thing so we can't change them but we can change us a good way of of recognizing your patterns is by listening to your feelings really paying attention to your intuition now McDonald says in her article I found that when I'm involved in a pattern my e emotions run a bit stronger kind of like a warning from my subconscious mind to pay attention to what's happening and more often than not I recognize the pattern when the situation has ended or changed hindsight is 2020 that way she says and it can be difficult to recognize a pattern while it's playing out so usually we don't recognize it until after it's over and that's okay because now we're at choice time right we're gonna choose not to repeat that behavior it's not we're gonna choose never to date again or never to diet again or never to search for a new career or never try to make amends with somebody because it always blows up in your face no we're not gonna choose that we're gonna choose to look inside and change a pattern within us and the key to changing and, and recognizing these patterns is just to be alert be aware pay attention when you're feeling those stronger emotions so the holidays are upon us and they're coming in rapid succession we've already had Thanksgiving and if you're like most people holidays are filled with traditions and family events and lots of expectations that can often lead to stress or feeling pressured so what if we started right here and now to change our patterns during this holiday season what if we decided that uh, we were going to change our patterns and stripes become plaids <laughs> and polka dots become flowers easy you can see this right it's easy what if this holiday season there were no have to's there were no shoulds what if you were free to do whatever you wanted to do during this holiday season and not to try to live up to somebody else's expectation or your own to try to do this year better than last year or do the things that you've always done even though they're not bringing you the same kind of joy that they used to what if you gave yourself permission to experience the holidays your way and experience a sense of freedom you can if you're willing to change your patterns are you willing to dump the parts of the holiday season the routine that doesn't bring you joy anymore oh, I see some people thinking about that I don't know I don't know if I can do that because I don't live in this world alone and I'm not a one member family but what if this holiday season you just decided to do less just a little bit less less shopping less wrapping less cooking less baking less visiting and what if you decided to do more of the things that really matter engaging engaging with others so many times we go to holiday parties and events and it's all the busyness of preparing for it and the busyness of cleaning up after it we don't really get present in the moment I invite you this holiday season to make a point to have rich conversations with the people that you're spending your time with your loved ones see the great thing ab about these annual holidays that come around every year at the same time is that we have an opportunity to do it differently every year 
we can look at what we did last year, what worked, what didn't work, and we can choose to do it differently. But you know what most people do? They watch the reruns, right? You're putting your, you're putting your life and rerun mode. And I know there's some great holiday classics and we'll watch them every single year, but when it comes to the way you choose to do the holidays, you don't have to rerun the same play that you've always done. You have the right to change. And when you make a change, you can stick to it. Now I know, we're not, we're, we're not in this world alone, right? And we have families, and we have events, and we have people counting on us to do things a certain way. But if you choose to change, and you tell others that you've made a, a choice to change, they either accept it or they don't. We can't change them. But here's a couple examples. Lydia came from a large family, and every year at holiday time, Lydia found herself stressing over the amount of shopping she had to do and the amount of money that it was costing her to buy all these gifts. But it was a tradition in her family. And a few years back, somebody else had expressed that it's getting kind of expensive, so they put a limit on the gift giving and said, no more than 50 bucks. And Lydia said, you know how many people are in my family? 50 plus 50 plus 50. This adds up. So she came to her family on their holiday Thanksgiving celebration, and she said, this year I've decided that I'm going to do all handmade, homemade gifts for you because that's what I want to do. Well, one of her sisters said, well, that's not fair. We're going to spend all 50 bucks on you and your kids and your, you know, and, and you're going to give us something homemade? And Lydia said, you're not obligated to give me a gift. You're not obligated to give anybody a gift. You don't have to if you don't want to. I know what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm sure there was chatter after Lydia left, right? Well, a couple other people in the family decided to join her in that. And she was very pleased and very proud of the gifts that she made and the way in which they were received. The following year, Lydia says, more members of the family did the homemade, handmade gifts. And there was more joy, and people were proud of what they were giving and felt good that somebody thought enough of them to spend their time and energy creating something. And then there were still the sisters who wanted to give the lavish gifts, and they did. But what they all recognized is they could do the gift exchange, the holiday, giving the way they wanted to. Nobody could change Lydia's mind. She had to be firm, she stuck to it, and it worked. And then there's the story of Mark, a young father, happily married, two little children, and dreading Christmas Day. Dreading Christmas Day. He talked to his wife about it. He said, I, I'm like filled with this anxiety and dread over Christmas. I don't like this feeling. She says, where is it coming from? And he says, well, every Christmas morning, we wake up before the crack of dawn with these kids to run downstairs and see what Santa Claus brought us. And then as soon as we finish our gift exchange and, and have a real quick breakfast, we're upstairs and, and getting ready and putting on our holiday clothes and getting in the car packing it with gifts, and taking the two-hour drive to my parents' house. And by the time we get there, the kids are feeling car sick, and my mom prepares this big meal that nobody wants to eat. They just want to go play, and we have this big meal, and then there's more presents. And the kids are being rude by this time because they're tired. And frankly, Mark said, so am I. I don't want to do this anymore. And the kids are crying. They want to go home and play with their toys from Santa. And there ends up being tension. And I know my parents feel it. And I feel like my children are being rude, but they're just being children. I don't want to do this anymore. And so Mark and his wife decided they were going to tell his parents they weren't coming on Christmas Day. And his parents were upset. Do you know that means we're going to be alone on Christmas Day? And he says, if you'd like to come to our house, you're welcome. We'll make something for dinner. 
Well, the parents didn't, couldn't do anything about it. Mark's mind was made up. So they arranged to do the, their Christmas celebration a couple days later on a Saturday afternoon. Kids got up, had breakfast, dressed in whatever they wanted, took the drive to Grandma and Grandpa's house, all refreshed and happy, and, and they had a wonderful meal, and they exchanged gifts, and Mark said it was the best Christmas they ever had. In fact, he said it was the best two Christmases they ever had. But had he left it up to his parents, that never would have happened. And had he left it up to tradition, or the have-tos and the shoulds, that never would have happened. Mark decided that he wanted to change the pattern, and he did. No have-tos, no shoulds. Recognize this, everything that you do or do not do is your choice. Your choice. Everything I do, I do by choice. Say it with me, would you, even if you don't believe it just yet? Everything I do, I do by choice. Now some of you are out there thinking, no, there are some have-tos. I have to go to work tomorrow. Guess what? No, you don't. You go because you like the result of your going. If you don't like the result of your going, don't go. It's really simple. We put so much pressure on ourselves. We, and, and you know what? Work and other obligations that we call obligations can be so much more enjoyable when we start to see them as a choice we're making instead of a demand someone else is making on us. There are no have-tos and shoulds. None. And when you realize that you are at choice in all things, you are powerful. Choice empowers us. Choice empowers me. Say it with me. Choice empowers me. So here are some ideas that I gathered that might help you to make some healthy changes in your patterns to honor yourself during the holidays and make them more enjoyable. Number one, ask for what you want or need. Ask. All they can do is say no. And speaking of saying no, number two, say no without guilt. And say yes because you want to, not because you have to, because there are no have tos. Let go of trying to be in control of anything other than yourself. What people wear, what they eat, what they drink, whether or not they show up, when they show up, not ours. Give yourself permission to do things your way. When it comes to holiday events especially, give yourself permission to go late, to leave early, or to not go at all. No have tos. And be sure that you're taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually through the holiday season. And when you do these things, when you shift your patterns and see how good it feels, you may just decide to continue this pattern long beyond the holidays. So while I was planning this talk, I was perusing a um, body, mind, and spirit guide. Now, do you have these here at the church? Okay, free publication. Uh, so I came across an article in here, the, the horoscopes, and, and this is November's issue, but it was sitting around and I said, never been big on horoscopes, but I noticed that I knew the author. Her name is Aluna Michaels, she's fabulous. I knew her at Renaissance Unity some years ago, um, and Aluna is a deeply spiritual person. She's an author and a, a second generation astrologer. She has a master's degree in spiritual counseling. She kind of knows her stuff around these, this stuff. But horoscopes, come on. So I don't know why, but I read every single horoscope in here. Now, according to the zodiac signs, I'm a cancer. I'm on the Cancer Leo cusp. I read every single one of them. Why? Not because I didn't have other things to do in my world, trust me. 
But what I realized as I was reading them, I started underlining things in every one of them, and they were all speaking to me about pattern change. So this came to me, and I drew a couple lines from every zodiac sign, and I thought, these fit. So find which ones fit for you. Forgive yourself. Use your imagination. Rediscover something. Meditate. Be open to see patterns so you don't repeat them. Honor your thoughts and feelings. Be brave. Be vulnerable. Find balance. Be passionate. Be aware of unconscious family patterns that hijack your emotions. Observe yourself. Let love flourish. Release stuff you don't need. Think self-loving thoughts. Speak kind words. Eat higher quality foods to honor your body. Horoscopes. I added a few more. Say thank you multiple times every day. Give yourself permission to be strong, to be great, to be intelligent and compassionate and unique. Sing. Try something new. Anything new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I see and acknowledge the divine pattern in each of you. See it yourself. See it in one another. Behold the Christ. Behold the Christ that lives here. And enjoy a great holiday season. Let's pray. Hmm. Father, Mother, everything, God, as we prepare once again to enter the Christmas season, we remember the birth of your son, Jesus, as we remember our own birth as your children. You told us that you created us in your image and likeness. Let us hold to the idea that we are your children, that we are loved, that we are provided for, that we will be nurtured, that we have a choice, that our life is filled with choices, and that whatever choice we make, you will support us and walk the journey with us. We are so grateful for knowing your presence, your love, and your power working in us, as us, and through us, God. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Now we have our time of offering. And we share from this place of life and love and choice. For we know that is in giving that we receive. I don't know your 
Do we say it? Is that okay? So we say the blessing together. Yes. Okay. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let no thing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power and all who'd gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of Comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas doth bring redeeming grace. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. <laughs> hey, now I want you all to sing, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort. That's more like it. <laughs> Thank you. Before we do our peace song, though, I do want to remind those who intend to stick around and put uh, decorations on the Christmas tree, make sure you become, get first in line at the refreshment table so you can get through that and then uh, be available to come in and uh, start putting bulbs on the tree. Thank you. And we're going to bless our offering here. And I ask these two young fellas to stand up here with me. These are Carolyn's great-grandsons? Great-grandsons. And I want to tell you, they sat here in this front row, and they paid attention, or looked like they were anyway. And I'm so proud of who you are. And so, and so what is your name again? Kalis. Kalis and? Kylie. Kylie. Okay. So Kalis and Kylie. Let's welcome this loving energy as we welcome these gifts and these offerings because these truly are gifts from God, yes? yes? Okay, and as we move into the holiday season, let's remember that, that these people are gifts from God as this monetary gift that we bring forth are also gifts from God. And as we give in a spirit of love, it comes back to us. So in the spirit of the love of this season and the power of life that we celebrate this December in unity, God, we ask you to bless these gifts and bring them forth to their highest good for the good of all of the givers for this beautiful church, Unity East, that we know that you are here blessing and prospering now. And we ask you to bring forth joy in all of our lives the joy that comes from children. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Do we have anybody visiting here for the first time or back after a long leave? Anybody? Do we have any guests in the building? All family here today, huh? Well, welcome back, everybody. Every time you come back, you can come back new. And now we're going to move into our peace zone. So if we can have everybody stand.
we've just proclaimed that we carry with us out into our world, we do so knowing that the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us, and wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you.